Hao, everyone. I'm June. Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be experiencing China. I think you already know where this country is, but I will show you its location anyway. The official name of China is the People's Republic of China. The word China appeared first in 1555. It is derived from Jimmy, a Persian adjective meaning Chinese. This word was popularized in Europe by Marco Polo. China has control over mainland China, Hong Kong, and Macau. By the way, Happy New Year! Some of you might be thinking, huh? Why did she just say that? It is February now, but it is Chinese New Year today. <laughs> Chinese New Year is on and around New Moon on the first day of the year in the traditional Chinese calendar. This calendar is based on the changes in the moon. So Chinese New Year is never on January the 1st. It moves around between January 21st and February 20th. It is one of the most important holidays for Chinese people all over the world. The holiday is a time for gifts to children and for family gatherings with large meals, just like Christmas in Europe. Unlike Christmas, children usually get gifts of cash in red envelopes and not toys or clothes. Now it is a national holiday of Republic and People's Republic of China, the Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei, and Indonesia. The traditional New Year in Vietnam and Korea are almost always on the same day as Chinese New Year, but are sometimes different. Today, I will show you the photos of our family travel in China from 1994. We had neither smartphone or digital camera back then, so I have only these analog photos. I was 12 and my brother was 14. We went to China for the summer vacation and had an amazing time there. Let's look at the photos together. On August 12, 1994, we took a flight to Beijing. From the airport, we went directly to the hotel to check in, and then we went to a market nearby to have dinner. It was my first time to try a real Chinese street food, which was delicious. On August 13th, it was a rainy day, but we had to see something in Beijing before we took a flight to Yeonbyeon. So we went to the city center of Beijing. First, we saw the Tiananmen, the Gate of Heavenly Peace, which is the front gate of the imperial city of Beijing and widely used as a national symbol. The portrait of Mao Zedong hang on the gate. After that, we visited the most famous tourist attraction of Beijing, the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City is a palace complex in Beijing with a total area of 720,000 square meters. It is the largest palace in the world still in existence. The Forbidden City served as the home of Chinese emperors and their households and was the ceremonial and political center of the Chinese government for almost 500 years. It was constructed from 1406 to 1420, and the complex consists of 980 buildings with 9,999 rooms. There were many tourists in the palace despite the weather. We bought the disposable plastic raincoats walked around the palace and took pictures in the rain. We took a flight to Yeonbyeon, which has been designated as a Korean Autonomous Prefecture. This city was like Korea in China. Most signboards on the streets were written both in Korean and Chinese, and we had chance to meet Jo Sun-jok, the ethnic Koreans living in China. We stayed at the house of the village four men, who organized a small party for us. We sat around a campfire, ate the corns, and the neighbors sang and danced together. The next day, we went to the Baekdu Mountain. Baekdu Mountain, or Changbai Mountain, is a volcano on the border between North Korea and China. 
This mountain is 54.5% in North Korean territory, 45.5% in China. The Korean name is Baekdusan, which means White Head Mountain. The Chinese name is Changbaishan, it means snow piles up on the large mountain. It has large crater lake, which is called Heaven Lake. Koreans call it Cheonji Lake, Chinese call it Tianji Lake. It is 2,744 meters above sea level. I still remember the path to the lake. We drove by a special jeep until a certain spot, then we had to walk. The interesting thing was that people were selling the hot spring boiled eggs on the mountain. We ate the eggs and continued walking. I was not keen on sports, so it was really hard for me. At some point, I couldn't walk anymore and I sat on the ground like this. It's embarrassing. When we finally arrived at the top of the mountain, it was so foggy. Unfortunately, we couldn't see anything there, but still we took few pictures. If you're lucky and have a wonderful weather, the Heaven Lake will look like this. Next morning, we headed to Tuman City. There was an observatory where we could see North Korea with a telescope. I was so excited about it because not many South Koreans have a chance to see North Korea. I could see the Tuman Border Bridge, which is a bridge over the Tuman River, connecting Tuman City, China with Namyang, North Korea. On the North Korean side, I saw a building with a big picture of Kim Il-sung, the founder of North Korea who ruled the country from 1948 until his death in 1994. We went closer to the Tuman border bridge too. Of course, we didn't cross the bridge. We stayed on the Chinese side and just took pictures. Between 1879 and 1880, Zhang In-sok and Park In-yeon founded this well and many Koreans started settling down in Yeonbyeon. 1934, the well was rebuilt by a Korean resident and the memorial stone was set up. Yeonbyeon has Korean historical sites focusing on the independence movement during the Japanese colonial period. This is the Yongjong Middle School, the former Daesung Middle School that turned out independence activists. The famous Korean poet Yoon Dong-ju studied at this school and resisted the oppression of colonial occupation. His poem was carved on this rock. The most exciting experience of this travel was visiting the Great Wall of China. On August 16th, we went back to Beijing and visited the Great Wall of China, an ancient wall which is the longest structure humans have ever built. It was meant to protect the north of the Empire of China from enemy attacks. It is about 21,196 kilometers long, 9.1 meters wide, and 15 meters high. There are 7,000 watchtowers, blockhouses for soldiers, and beacons to send smoke signals. 19 walls have been built that were called the Great Wall of China. The most famous wall was built between 226 and 200 BC by the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Hong. Not much of this wall remains as people have been stealing from it. It was such a hot summer day when we were there. My mom and my brother bought funny hats that were ideal for that weather. We walked for a while on the Great Wall of China, then we went to the Summer Palace. The Summer Palace is mainly dominated by the 60 meters high Longevity Hill and the Kunming Lake. It covers an expanse of 2.9 square kilometers three quarter of which is water. The long corridor is a covered walkway in the Summer Palace. It is the longest corridor in China which is 728 meters long. It was built to make it possible to take a walk no matter what the weather was like. The marble boat, also known as the boat of purity and ease, is actually not a boat. It's a lakeside pavilion on the grounds of the Summer Palace. 
I don't know exactly where it was, but we went to a pottery school and saw how they worked too. My mom bought this vase there. On August 17, 1994, we visited the Temple of Heaven. The complex was visited by the emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties for annual ceremonies of prayer to heaven for a good harvest. First, we took a picture in front of the entrance to the Temple of Heaven, then we entered the temple. Right after the entrance, we climbed the white stairs to the circular mound altar. The circular mound altar is an outdoor empty circular platform on three levels of marble stones. On the first day of the first month in the traditional Chinese calendar, the emperor prayed here. He stood in the center of the top terrace on top of the central stone and performed the ceremony to pray for rain. While praying, his voice became loud like the heaven oracle. The extreme smoothness of the altar's walls and floor caused sound waves in all directions to spread quickly to the stones and then get reflected back. Due to this process, an echo was created and the volume of the emperor's voice became nearly doubled. The effect was important as it symbolized that the emperor's voice would reach heaven. The Imperial Vault of Heaven is a single gabled circular building. It is the place for housing the God's tablets to be used at the ceremony of worshipping heaven. It is surrounded by a smooth circular wall, the echo wall, that can transmit sounds over large distances. This is the largest building in the Temple of Heaven, the Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest. It is a triple gabled circular building built on three levels of marble stone base where the emperor prayed for good harvests. The building is completely wooden with no nails. The original building was burned down by a fire caused by lightning in 1889 and the current building was rebuilt several years after the incident. On the eastern and western sides of the sacred altar stand four ancestral tablets of Qing dynasty. On August 18th, we came back to Korea. This one is the last picture my dad took in China. We were impressed by so many bicycles on the street. That was all about our family travel in China. If you are interested, check the other video about our family travel in Israel from 2016 here. This is the fairy in the moon who always carries a rabbit in her arms. After the legend, there were nine suns on the sky and people were suffering because of the heat. A guy shot the bows and eight suns fell down. So everyone was happy and this guy was awarded a liquid with which he could become an immortal god. He didn't drink it but his wife did and she's been living in the moon since then. The man wishing the gathering of the family again performed a memorial ceremony on August 15th every year. Until today, there is a tradition in China and in many countries in Asia celebrating the moon with the family members on August 15th in the lunar calendar every year. On this base, there are many sorts of flowers, but most of them are peonies. 2019, there was a vote on China's national flower and the peony won with 79.7%. The China Flower Association said that they will submit the result to the government to determine the national flower. It hasn't been determined yet, but the peony is definitely the favorite flower of Chinese people. It has been a favorite of Chinese people for quite a long time. The peony originated in China and has been planted since 4,000 years. It was considered a symbol of the country during the Tang Dynasty and was the favorite flower of people at that time. In Chinese culture, the peony represents prosperity, elegance, solemnity, and is nicknamed the monarch of the flowers. And this is a bracelet I bought on the street market. 
I made two Chinese dishes. One of them was my favorite Chinese dish, Mapo Tofu, and handmade dumplings. Chinese eat dumplings for the new year, that's why I tried to make it myself. I made a mistake to use the flour which I had used for the German noodle, Spätzle, but still it was not bad. See you in the kitchen.
있던데? 